Hi everybody, this is Tom, this is Quick Watercolour Birds, and in this one I'm going to attempt to do a genuinely quick watercolour bird, so let's have a look. So it seems to be a lot of my videos, even though called Quick Watercolour Birds, seem to be getting longer and longer, so I thought I would take an opportunity to have a look at doing a much quicker one and try and stick with the title of this series. So the idea is that a lot of these videos are going to go a little bit more extended so I'm not going to limit myself always to a quick amount of time. Some of them maybe I might even set a time limit and see what we can achieve. In this one I just kind of set my task to say well let's really try and do this one nice and quick, very simple, very loose and we're going to be painting another one of my favourite birds or at least my favourite garden birds here in the UK, which is the goldfinch. I always love seeing these, they're beautiful little birds. They've got that amazing pop of red and dark black on the face, and then that little zing of yellow on the wing. And those two things I think are some features that really kind of set them off, especially against the more muted colours of the body. And they also have these amazing kind of striking black and white markings on them. So there's a lot to get stuck into, but at the same time we can kind of section it off and work on these sections very quickly and then tie it all together right at the end. So let's have a look at it. In this video I thought I'd mix it up and show you a time lapse of me doing the drawing. What you can't see is a very light drawing of an egg shape for the body and then a, a much smaller kind of egg shape for the head. Checking those proportions all the time. Then I go in and break the head up into those various sections on the bird. Then once I've done that I go in and just section off the body so it's big shapes working towards smaller shapes. Once I'm fairly happy with that I go back in with the rubber, get rid of all of my working out marks and then I go back in one last time and just tighten up the drawing, make all those little adjustments, put the markings in and then my very final thing would to go back in with the rubber and just take out some of the harder, darker marks. Okay guys, so here we go, we're going to try and keep it really simple. Uh, I'm actually going to start with some of the lighter colours in the face and um, we can leave any white areas for now because we can always glaze them later with um, with like a very soft purpley blue if we want to. So I'm just going to dive in there, remember we're going to keep this one really simple, really quick. Uh, slightly drier brush will allow those kind of broken brush strokes that we want, that sort of thing. Just simple shape. Um, nice kind of quick hit to the brush. I'm going to come up really close to the eye there, make it a bit more of an interesting shape. See, although it's a simple shape, we're still trying to make it interesting. And here we want maybe a slightly broken brush stroke just to get a little few hits of the, the white of the page. And that's it to start with. And look how the bottom, or we're going to make the bottom red ever so slightly darker just to give it a bit more form. So we're going to come in there tiny touch of the Prussian blue and as soon as we start introducing like a second tone in there things start to get a little more interesting but we're going to keep it really really simple something like that and we'll just let those colours kind of flow together we can go in with a clean brush and take a little bit off the top there so we end up with kind of three tones a slightly lighter tone something like that but that's all we kind of need for that first bit do we want to get some wet into wet areas of the really deep black? So, possibly. So we're going to go in and we've got to time it right. See, that's a little bit of a straight line down the side there. Now's the time to adjust it while it's wet. So I'm going to go back to my red, nice light red. Make sure we get a nice clean brush in between. Uh, we're just going to bring that out just a little bit more so it's not such a straight line down there and we're going to go to a really deep dark that very very strong almost neat paint um, and then it won't blend too far into that wet that we've already got and we're just going to tiny touch more water to help it move and I'm going to come into here I'm going to paint around the eye we're going to get a little bit of bleeding into the red but because the paint that I'm putting down is not too wet it's not going to go too far it's going to stay kind of in where I want it to. I'm going to take some of that colour I'm going to bring it into this part of the beak not the whole beak 
but this little area here and then we can glaze the rest of the beak later so this is we're working really really fast here and then we're going to go a little bit darker on the tip of the beak and then when this is dry later then we can come in and um, kind of glaze a slightly softer color over the rest of the beak look how that black is going into the the red but not too much just going to soften that edge there and that's fine for the start of the head um, this bit I don't want to work wet into wet so I've left this top bit of the red to dry and then we can just dive in with our Prussian blue mixed with our pyrrole red a tiny touch of water just to help the paint move a little bit and really simple direct brush strokes into that area there and what does that dark do it comes into the red a little bit there it just comes over the beak a little bit more there that isn't going to go any further now that black and we're going to come down into this area here and just try and get it in some very simple brush strokes like that and that's it that's kind of the head of the goldfinch very quickly done uh, I'm going in with pure water and a little bit in the brush not too much and we're just going to drag some of that into here I'm going to pull out a little bit here and what that does is it it just gives us a bit more variety in the black so it's still a like a dark black area but that doesn't mean that it has to be perfectly dark we could even go in with a little bit of uh, kitchen roll and just pull out something in there it's see, it just makes it a bit more interesting and for me that's the face done apart from going back in and ever so slightly at the end once it's all dried off a little bit uh, we go in and glaze over the beak with a bit of shadow and we go and glaze over the um and do the eye and glaze over the white area so that's what i mean we're going to keep the white areas kind of just white for now so we're going to go to a bigger brush and tackle this large area here so this is an interesting color we're going to go with our yellow a tiny touch of red and a tiny touch of blue and those are our only choices and if we get the right balance so not too much blue just enough to take it away from being orangey not too much red it's a bit of a fine balancing act and those are our only choices in this painting so um, it's yeah just just keep working it there's no rush here see that's a little bit too greeny so I'm gonna pop in a tiniest touch more red and just warm it up a bit yeah there we go and now that's purely come from just balancing those three primaries we're going to come up to there those two can meet if they fuzz together a little bit actually that could be quite a nice thing we're going to come just a, even more ready on the shoulder there now we're going to bring it down into here and I'm going to go with a damp brush with very little pigment as we work down into this area here and that's going to give us like a softer kind of look um, and then I'm going to take that same approach into the kind of the collar area here and we'll leave a little white of the page showing there and just a little brush stroke up there that kind of broken brush stroke and that's a really lovely kind of very simple gentle wash we can go back in and pull out areas if we want them to be a bit lighter maybe down in here we want it to be a bit lighter just kind of pull it out and to get more contrast are there areas that we also want it to go a little bit darker so just while we're at it basically slightly more saturated paint a little bit more red a little bit more blue a little bit more yellow trying to create an ever so slightly darker color of what we've just mixed don't want it to be too green don't want it to be too red don't want it to be too purple it's a bit of a it's like this yeah this little balancing act and we're just going to go a little bit darker up on the shoulder there and I think maybe we go a little bit darker uh, down on this area down here and we might go a little bit darker in here which is eventually going to go black so I'm just kind of loading in and what that does is it gives us just a a bit more interest it's not just a flat wash it's got kind of variation of tone within it which is kind of something we want and we can keep on pulling out little areas so that we get that variation of tone so now we're going to come into I'm leaving the bright yellow for now that can almost be glazed on later because I want that yellow to be a really clear vibrant color that doesn't really don't particularly want it to go wet into wet anything else in this particular one or with anything else okay so we're gonna keep this really quick we're gonna come in kind of here 
and we don't have to neatly paint around the markings but at the same time we do want those markings to be there this is that kind of lovely um, kind of thick consistency I'm talking about uh, it's got very little water in it so even if it does hit the wet wash it won't go too far into it it's quite controllable in some sense we might get a lovely wet wash here a bit of wet into wet but again it won't go too far and I'm really focusing on making it an interesting shape so there we will get a nice little wet into wet kind of hit uh, and then we can while this is wet we can work into it and we'll get again a nice little soft area in contrast to some of these kind of harder areas those darks can link together completely the darks of the wings they don't have to be separate um, and then we can take that straight into the tail but I'm going for real quick here the almost sketchy approach uh, to the brush into there that we can worry about later and then while it's wet we can load it with more paint if we want to so we get a bit more again kind of variation of tone um, and what we're going to get is like a lovely little bit of that colour off the chest is also under here but we're going to soften it down and again create a bit of a wet into wet kind of look don't mind if I hit some of those marks in there and we're going to trap that kind of lovely lighter colour in there so I'm trapping that light in there and then what we can do is we can just load that bottom edge remember this, this uh, wash loading that I've touched on in one of the other uh, videos we just kind of load it like that some of the areas of white of the page look a little bit harsh and stark at the moment but we're going to we will do something um, with those. I want to let's get a little bit of that greenery in the background. I think a, a nice green in this could really set set off the set off some of the other colours. Let's go a little bit more of like a bluey green and let's really kind of water it down with um, a damp brush. Gonna come into there. That's all dry now, that end of the towel, and we can get a little bit of a splash. And then we can, we can kind of evolve this area a little bit more as time goes on, although we're not going to spend too much time on this, remember? So I'm going to drop in some slightly darker colours just to give it a little bit more interest. And that's kind of it. So the bright yellow is going to go on later, a little, a little moment later. Um, so we're going to come in back to the head now. Let's really speed this up. This is a quick watercolour birds. <laughs> I will do lots more long ones as well, but like I said, I just want to keep this one as an example of how quick you can be with watercolour. So now the eye begins to make a little bit more sense. Look, I've left the white around the eye, so I've not painted the whole eye in. Just helps it pop out, and suddenly we've got a living, a living bird. <laughs> That's when you know you've kind of you're kind of well on the way then. So all of the beak is dry. So I'm going to mix a very soft, very, very light, ever so slightly purpley wash. So mostly Prussian blue with a little bit of red until it comes us, or gives us a kind of fairly neutral gray color, loads of water. And I'm just going to use that to glaze over. That's almost too dark, so I'm going to take some of the pigment out and I'm going to work with what I've just put down and just kind of gently soften it in. And what I'm aiming to do is just leave a little light on that front edge up there. And it's a balancing act between going dark enough that the light appears light, but not so dark that we lose the kind of gentle light feel of the bird. So it's just, it's that sort of a thing. And we can always go back in and pull out there. And we can always go back in and just sharpen up the tip there. So not too watery now that I'm, I'm going to sharpen an area up. We're going a little bit stronger with the consistency of paint. If it goes into the wash I've just put down, fine. But we don't want it to go too far. And it's just given us a little bit more texture on the beak. Made it kind of realistic without detail. So realism doesn't always come from detail. It actually comes from those little gentle variations of tone. I'm just going to bring that dark into there just to separate the beak a little bit more. It's a little bit harsh to dark, so back in with a damp brush and just kind of hit the edge of it 
and soften it in. I'm now going to go very, very gently and slightly warmer, very, very light. So loads of water, barely any pigment. And we're just going to create, I just want to take that line out, this line out here. I don't particularly, that pencil line, I don't mind pencil lines, but sometimes you end up with ones that really don't serve the painting. So in here, just a little bit of texture so that it's not pure white. Uh, again, it gives it a sense of realism without having to to do loads of detail. It just breaks up a fairly um, kind of simple area. And I think while this, no, oh, that green is dry now, so I'm not going to come back into that. Um, so really all there is to do is to take that same colour that I've been using as the shadow and work out where else I want a shadow. Like I want a little shadow there. I don't want that to be the white of the page necessarily. We want a little bit of variation. We want it to still look like light, uh, sorry, white foliage, foliage, feathers. We want it to look like white feathers, but we don't want it to, to, um, to be so stark as the white of the page. Some of the other little areas we could leave as white. So let's find a little pattern of light here. Let's just glaze over some of those a little bit just to break them up, throw them into shadow and more, maybe make this side a bit more shadowy and that one a bit more light. Let's go just in there. So it's just break, yeah, breaking up the white. Then as long as that is perfectly dry, I can get in that super vibrant bright yellow, which should make the the whole bird kind of come to life because for me the the goldfinch is that combination of the wonderful red in the head which it's got and then that super vibrant yellow on the wing uh, and I'm going to go in quite thick with it and we're going to come in just there and there and just a little bit under there and then just kind of let it let it do its thing I didn't want that, as I said, to be a wet into wet mix. I wanted a really clean, vibrant, bright yellow in that area. And that's kind of given it to me. And that's <laughs> that's pretty much it. That's, that's the bird done. Um, like I said, very quick, very simple watercolour. I think this area just needs a little bit more attention. And what it needs is a bit more contrast, uh, just to give the bird a bit more interest. Let's go in with a stronger shadow under there number one but soften that shadow down see how that yellow's gone into the shadow i don't really want that to happen i don't think so i'm going to pull out some of the yellow don't, <laughs> don't want to kind of go against what i what i want right at the end here don't want to fluff it right at the end so we're going to get a little bit darker there and i think i like that green that i've got there but i'm going to go a little bit darker little bit more interesting and yeah that's a much more interesting kind of punchy blue and it benefits from that kind of bravery of, of actually saying actually let's go a little bit more brave with that and let's do a little bit of a flick kind of that way because I love those flicks that we get out of these background areas uh, and then what we can do is we can keep loading that wash if we want to. We can go a little bit darker in there. And then as that wash settles down and dries, we'll get some really lovely effects. So don't work the paint too much, but at the same time, um, we can do a little bit. Well, let's just come up there a little bit more and trap a little bit of light on the front of the bird there. It's only subtle, but just a little bit of light trapped on the front of the bird there. And let's soften that edge here with a soft brush uh, and that's kind of it there we go guys that was a, a truly i hope super quick watercolor bird so there we go i did my best to keep it very quick very short fairly concise hopefully that kind of came across like i said simple but accurate shapes are such an important part of these quick watercolor birds if you can get a shape accurate but keep it simple in terms of the wash, so not overworking it, not too much detail, try and be fairly decisive about how dark or light you want it. You can get something that is very effective very quickly. And we want that kind of combination of slightly harder, sharper edges in some places, and then a little bit softer in other places. One thing that really allowed me to kind of speed through this one was to leave anywhere that was kind of white on the bird 
leave it completely white and then we can make the decision to kind of throw it into shadow a little bit later on. And that was it, you saw that just as we popped the eye in, as usual, that was what brought it to life. And that was it, quick, simple watercolour birds. I hope you enjoyed that one. As always, guys, don't forget you can find the line drawing along with the reference photo in this case over on my Patreon page. You can find it completely free in the public section, but if you do want to look at going a little bit further, there are various tiers of subscription which will take you through to kind of tutorials, time lapses, right up to kind of mentorship and email critiques. You can also support the Creative Perspectives podcast on there, which is where I chat to loads of other artists about life as an artist, but also just kind of the creative endeavours that we're all pursuing. And very finally, do consider subscribing because there's going to be loads more of this stuff to come. Don't forget to hit the like button, please feel free to share. And until next time guys, happy painting, happy creating, and I shall see you soon. Burn my hand.